Hey there guys, I'm Lee Williamson. Uh, recently I wrote two articles for School of Motion where I experimented with uh, Miximo to rig a character for Cinema 4D. And then I took it further and uh, learned how to do my own DIY motion capture um, using uh, the software iPySoft. Um, now, there are things I, I may have left out or just things I've been thinking about recently. Uh, when you are using uh, Miximo, uh, all these uh, motion capture recordings are perfectly looped. Now, that's not the same, uh, not the same case when you actually are making your own because you always start off with a T-pose and then you walk off the camera and well, let's just say it doesn't look perfectly. So I'm gonna show you how to record with iPi, bring it in Cinema 4D and take your um, trim and crop it and make sure that your start frame is the same as your end frame causing the perfect loop. And then you can build up your own custom library of FBXs um, to do your own animation. Without further ado, let's dig in. Open up an uh, iPi recorder. So first thing you're gonna need to do is uh, set up your kinetic camera on an easel. I've got a Manfrotto uh, camera easel. Um, all I'm doing is literally lining it up straight so the plane is perfectly horizontal. And once I'm happy with that, uh, all I need to do is press evaluate background and it takes a snapshot of the background start recording, uh, get myself in front of the camera, uh, put myself into a T-pose, arms are high in the air. And then once I'm done with that, I will act out my motion. So I'm just gonna be marching on the spot. And once I'm happy with uh, my marching, all I'm gonna do is walk off and press stop recording. So now I can just press play and have a look at my footage just to make sure that my head, uh, hands and feet are on camera so that when a motion tracks, uh, I can see um, all my limbs in the shot. Okay, I'm happy with that. So all I really need to do is uh, rename this footage and save it out. Okay, so open up iPi mocap studio. And all we need to do now is drag that recording onto the stage. And then you choose your character's height. Now the first thing that's very important is, remember I did a T-pose in the beginning, so you notice how uh, my character has now snapped um, to the rig perfectly. If you don't do a T-pose, you won't get the perfect uh, a snap to your rig and things will go all strange. So now, first thing I need to do is trim my region of interest. So it's region of interest and the take track need to be the same length. That's that gray bar and the green bar. Uh, first, I'll just save out the file. You don't want to lose that project. Right, so I got it starting with the T-poses and where I'm walking off. Well, I'm happy with that. Now, the next thing you need to do is uh, press track forward. Uh, wait, yeah, wait, uh, let me try. Um, it's also good to actually check that uh, use fast algorithm and enable head tracking. Uh, you'll get a much better uh, recording with that. So now we're better tracking. Right, let's see how that plays out. Don't worry that the rig goes all funny when I walk off the screen. We can always trim that further. So let's just crop it out to uh, just before I start uh, to walk off the camera. Cool, now the next thing I can do is press jitter removal. Uh, there's a whole bunch of extra options inside here, but out of the box, just pressing that should uh, smooth out your recording uh, quite substantially. If you want to smooth out maybe the hands or feet more, you can just go into your options and go further with that. But that tracking has seemed to have gone pretty nicely, so I'm happy with that. I won't. 
Right, then I'm going to go to Miximo.com and log in. You can do this with an Adobe account for free. And I'm going to choose uh, the Ping Pong Ball Man, perfectly adequate for mocap recording. So I'll use this character. I'm not going to add any animation to him. I'm going to download him straight as the T pose. And we'll use uh, FBX uh, T pose, download. And then we can open up our uh, mocap studio again and go to file, set target, and import file. And we can choose our ping pong man. All right, so let's see what we got here. There we go, perfectly um, attached to the rig and working just fine. So now all I need to do is export animation. So file, export animation, and save that FBX out. So open up Cinema 40 and press uh, Merge Objects and choose your FBX and press OK. And you'll see all the keyframes out on the stage. Now you can't see all the keyframes, so you just need to get some more frames so you can see everything. And the next thing we need to do is click on our rig and then go into animate and add motion clip. You can give it a name if you want, I'm not going to. Press OK and then press F Shift 3 on the keyboard and go into motion mode. And this is where you can see out your clips baked out here. It's a lot easier to edit it this way than with keyframes because you're editing all the movements as a whole. Now the first thing we want to do is um, crop off the T-pose and the walking off the stage, anything that's not needed. So I'm going to go to a point where um, one leg, the left leg is up high in the air with his uh, toe pointing forward and press right click and, and cut that. Um, and then just delete it and I'm going to bring this to the first frame. And then I'm going to find a frame that looks similar to that to complete the loop. Yeah, I think that's about it. Yeah, I think that's about right. Cut that, click on it and delete it. Oh, not all of it. Just select that one specific one. Right, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this by pressing Shift Alt uh, uh, Control on the keyboard. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to stretch this out and I'm going to take the very first frame. Do you remember where the toe was uh, sitting at? I'm going to crop everything else off so that I just have that very first keyframe with his toe in the end. Now this is of the, the very first frame. And I'll cut that off. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to stretch this out. So imagine that first keyframe just is playing out for a much longer time. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because when you drag one uh, motion clip over the top of another one, it frame blends. So imagine we are frame blending the very last frame with the very first frame. And that way we're going to get that uh, first frame to be identical to the last frame. And you should see a little uh, a graph curve inside there. Um, change it to linear uh, because, you know, these are two clips that are uh, going at a constant speed. So we want it to merge uh, seamlessly from one to another. And once you're happy with this, you can then convert these uh, this animation back to keyframes again. Now I can delete this other motion mode um, because now it's back on the, the timeline as keyframes. And then I can click on my rig once again. Let's see, yeah, that loop looks perfect to me. Then I can click on the rig once again and go animate, add to motion clip. Now this time I will give it a name because I'm I'm happy with that. 
Okay, so it's baked once again. So uh, Shift F3 on the keyboard, go into motion mode, and now we will see uh, the looped animation. Right, and then all we need to do is just see where that loop is and crop off any extra bits that's not needed in the loop. So now we should have a perfect loop where the start frame is the same as the end frame. Then all I need to do is click on it and add some more loops just to test out and see if it is looping seamlessly. Cool, I'm happy with that.